What is up, DCS crew? We are back at it today with, um, I guess, volume two of the uh, the best tech bouquet line uh, from uh, top notch designer Ostop Hell. Uh, he had originally uh, provided a knife for best tech to release in their production line that is based on the modern day Kiridashi. It was called the Tulip. It's a small, very functional, uh, utility based uh, upgraded steel and upgraded. Uh, uh, handle with the titanium um, uh, scales and uh, it, it was a great great looking knife extremely cool uh, looking and very functional knife that you can keep in your fifth pocket now this particular knife which is uh, number two in their line is um, the ivy and I'm going to show it right after the intro but um, it's a little bit sleeker it's a little bit taller and it has a different blade shape um, I got a feeling you're going to like it a lot and uh, he did mention, um, it's a true story, the color schemes for this particular knife are based on uh, the Batman villain, uh, Poison Ivy. So stay tuned. We're going to go ahead and check out um, Ostop Hill's Ivy from Best Tech Knives. <laughs> Right, guys had to go ahead and switch the bone for my uh my dog uh ziggy and uh, but in the meantime i was able to go ahead and open this up and take out the knife so you can check out this is the best tech ivy okay let me go ahead and actually put it on the show side laying down so that you can see it nice and flat and you can actually see the clip the scales and uh the blade now uh, the cool thing about this, this is another front flipper design that is uh, designed by Ostap Hill. Um, uh, as you probably know, he actually is pretty proficient in uh, front flipper designs. Um, one of the first ones that I ever got to check out, which I did a video of, was the uh, the Real Steel Metamorph. It's not a best tech knife, but it is a front flipper that he did. It was very sleek, um, very um, very thin, and it was very like uh, office gentleman knife oriented. 14C28 and steel um, from Real steel knives and it was a nice budget knife now uh, what bestic sought to do with his uh, vision is create something that was a little bit more um uh it was a little bit more upscale um instead of aluminum handles they had titanium instead of 14 c28 and steel you know we had upper class uh, s35 vn steel that was imported from the united states um and you know they allowed him to be a little bit more creative in his creations so um out went the uh the bouquet series now um the first one like i said before it was based on the tulip this one is based on the ivy vines uh that would grow not the not the actual ivy uh itself but just the way that the the ivy vines creep up onto uh trees so um without any further ado let's go ahead and get into the specs now um the uh, knife itself overall with with the blade extended is just a little bit over seven inches it's uh 7.13 inches now um when it is closed and let me go ahead and see if i can close it one-handed here um it is just over four inches closed i'm talking 4.04 .04, i think was the uh the last measurement that i had seen from uh Blade HQ, so forget me, uh, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, blade length is just over three inches. It's 3.09 inches. Um, looking at a blade thickness at 0 0.14 inches. And uh, like I said before, the handle itself is titanium as well as the clip. And uh, the steel for the knife is, uh, you know, American imported S35 VN. Now, um, one thing that they do, and this is actually something that's pretty common with the line, is uh, they show the maker's mark on this side, it's Ostop Hell Design, and then they have uh, the Best Tech Knives insignia and the text, um, but they have it on stone washed flats and uh, satin grind, as you can see here, okay? Now, the um, the particular style on this one is a hawkbill, but it's a, a bit of a subdued hawkbill. Typically, when you see it, it's uh, it's gonna look uh, like a little bit more crooked of a blade. Uh, you know, I, I like to call it crooked like a politician, especially with the way that the elections are coming up these days, but that's another uh, rant for another video. Um, what he typically sees in the market is something like a um, a Warncliffe style or a draw point or something like that. And there were very few Hawkbill designs that were available in an aesthetically pleasing upscale design. And that's what he chose to be able to go ahead and use in this particular iteration of the bouquet designs, which translated to the Best Tech Ivy. So um, wait, because of the fact that it's a nice, uh, you know, thin, smallish, uh, uh, you know, blade 
and the overall design, including titanium handles, makes it very aesthetic but very light. Um, we're looking at 2.42 ounces, which is about 68 grams if you're uh, on the Euro side, or if you don't have a, uh, a scale that measures in ounces and it measures in grams, it, it measures out to 68 grams. Okay, so um, let me see, where do I go from here? Well, the truth is, um, why don't we go ahead and see it against a couple of other knives, okay? So, uh, being that my buddy Dylan Mallory is uh, in the building, we're going to go ahead and check out some of his designs. This one is per in particular is the Archeo. This is the full-size version. And uh, what do you know? I have the small version here. This is actually mine in brass, but that one is S35BN, just like uh, this guy right here. This one is D2. And as you can see, it actually equates to something a little bit more akin to the small version than the taller version, well, or the larger version right here. And um, what else do we have here? This is the SOG Terminus XR, another knife that is pretty close as far as dimensions uh, when you compare it to both knives, but in particular the Hawkbill uh, designed Best Tech Ivy. Um, this right here is something that you don't see very often, but I'm gonna whore it in as many videos as I can while Dylan is around. This is a prototype from uh, Civivi that it has not been named, so don't even ask in the comment section because I won't be able to tell you these. I honestly don't even know what the name is because he keeps it uh, under wraps. So in any case, um, the Giant Mouse Ace Grand, that's a green canvas micarta, and uh, M390 steel, excuse me, LMAX steel, they actually switched it up for this one from uh, the, the Giant Mouse crew. And speaking of green canvas micarta, <gasps> we have another Mallory design. It's the CGRB Centros in a, a nice um, contoured, uh, the, the green canvas micarta, which is uh, typically a flat G10 scale. So um, going back to the Best Tech Ivy, um, like I mentioned, it's based on the, the, the Ivy vines when it's opened. Um, and the color scheme um, actually is based on Batman's enemy, uh, Poison Ivy. And when I say color scheme, you see this, this is just a standard kind of like a, um, you know, like a raw titanium with a slight coloring on the clip. Uh, but the truth is it does come in different colors. Uh, you're gonna see it in green handles, uh, bronze, tan, and black, aside from this right here. So that's why it's kind of keeping those earthly earthy kind of colors to kind of go in line with the, the, uh, the, the plant uh, designation that it's given. So, um, and aside from that, um, the, the design was actually, and this is a, a true story after, after speaking with Osa, he mentioned that the design, design was made to also accommodate a, uh, a traditional flipper variant, um, but he made it uh, a front flipper, which by the way, it opens extremely easy as a front flipper. But, um, you know, for any fans that are interested in checking out this knife, as uh, you know, uh, just a standard traditional flipper, the truth is the way it, uh, uh, translates itself to the market as far as, you know, AKA sales and how it does and how it sells in the market is gonna dictate whether they come out with a flipper variant to this that is not the front flipper version, which, you know, uh, may actually come out as just a standard uh, a flipper variant. So you do wanna go ahead and make sure that you check that out. Now, um, you will rejoice in knowing that for this particular knife, it's actually extremely easy to go ahead and take down. As you notice, there, there is no uh, Torx uh, area for, for your tool here. There's one here, one here, one here, and one here. And the great thing is all of them accept one particular Torx bit, and that is T8, okay? No more T6s on this particular knife, so you don't have any problems with potentially uh, stripping the screw or your bit uh, trying to go ahead and uh, get into these particular knives. The great thing about this, T8 all the way around, I gotta really say, that is something that a lot of people do talk about um, and a lot of companies don't really listen to. So um, kudos to Best Tech for that. Now, one thing I do wanna mention about this particular knife, um, while it is ergonomically extremely solid and it has some really, really nice points to it, um, one thing that I did find that was a little bit alarming is the clip design. Now, um, this was something that I, I didn't even bring up to Dylan when uh, I showed him this knife, but he actually brought it up uh, as well. So I figured I'd go ahead and put it in this uh, uh, video. And uh, I'm not putting it because of Dylan, but it's really more just constructive criticism. So take that as you will. Um, if you notice the design of the clip has kind of like a, um, it's kind of have a, has like a slash here. This is a titanium clip and it's beautiful. It's actually, you know, inlaid very well. It's on, uh, it's not on the lock bar. So you don't have any issues when you're opening and closing the knife. But the problem with this, and I'm going to go ahead and put it closely, is because of the way that it's designed, that part right there, it thins 
basically, and let me see if I can put it into the light a little bit better, uh, it thins from here on out. So then when you open it, what you, what, what you see is the majority of the tension is from here to here. So that means if there's something wrong with this particular knife when you're opening and closing, chances are when it breaks, it, that's actually gonna be a weak point for the titanium pocket clip. And the issue with that is, um, you know, it's not very easy to be able to go ahead and get replacement clips on a knife that has just, just come out. And to be honest, as of the date of this video, I don't even believe it's come out yet. So uh, something to consider when you are looking over this knife. Um, that's the only thing I can tell you. If you're not a fan of the Hawkbill design, uh, you know, I'll say it like this. If you do not have a Hawkbill design, okay, a knife with this particular uh, uh, utility style blade, um, this may actually be a really good segue into maybe trying it out um, because it's, it has a very mild uh, curve to it, like inward curve that is very uh, reminiscent of the Hawkbill style blade. It's not too, too, too crazy, but it is something that uh, you can definitely see even when you compare it to something like a Warncliffe. Um, now, you're gonna ask me, well, what the hell do you need a, a Hawkbill blade for? Well, the truth is this this right here is the destroyer of sisal rope or anything like that. You know, if you have um, any type of rope that you need to have cut, the truth is it, it's a great, great um, knife, especially by the blade profile and the grind. It allows you to be able to get into it with that curve here. As it starts to move, this part here adds a little bit more, like the geometry of the blade allows you to be able to put more pressure on the rope as opposed to say like a worn cliff or just a standard, you know, spear of a draw point. And um, it actually works really well for that. So if you're, you're out to sea and you need to cut line or if you need to cut rope, say you're fishing or even you're, you know, you're outside and you want to cut through, um, you know, vegetation and, and stuff like that. This is actually great when it comes to that kind of thing. And it's cool that, you know, uh, it would work well outside in the garden with vegetation considering it's part of the bouquet line. So uh, as you can see, that all kind of like wraps around together, right? That's the that's the object of a nice review. <laughs> now, that being said, um, this is the Best Tech Ivy. Look forward to seeing this at places like White Mountain Knives, um, Blade HQ, Knife Center, and pretty much anywhere that you can find knives from uh, Best Tech. Um, if you have any questions about this particular knife, Ostop Hell is on Instagram and you can go ahead and pepper him with questions. You can reach out to Best Tech Knives USA on their Instagram account. Uh, I believe um, uh, our buddy Eric from the, uh, the the Best Tech Warranty Department will be more than happy to go ahead and answer any questions that you have or feel free to sign off below and I'll be more than happy to be able to do what I can to get you the information you need. You can also reach out to me on my Instagram at Daily Carry Solutions or the contact page at my website, dailycarrysolutions.com. Now, that being said, just remember guys, even if it's the Tulip, if it's the Ivy or even the Centros, no matter what you choose to EDC, remember, if you EDC, think of DCS. That's Carlos talking. Yes, that's me, Carlos. And uh, I really appreciate you guys listening in on this particular knife review from Best Tech Knives. Ostop Held knocked it out of the park again with number two design from his bouquet line. Go ahead and check this out when you can. I'm telling you, he makes some great front flipper designs. And I implore you to go ahead and look to see if there are any other designs like this that are a front flipper and have that hawk bill blade, uh, hawk bill blade shape. <laughs> Sound off below in the comments if you see anything like that. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and put some work out on this guy. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Take care.